YouTube Tag Talk guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at the CZ Scorpion. Now before I start this video, I do want to say that I purchased this gun with my own money and this is a legal short barreled rifle. I just did an E-Form 1, sent off my $200 and in about a month I got my tax stamp back. I do also have about 500 rounds through this system. While I know that's not a whole lot, I believe it's enough to give you my opinion and my experiences. Now you may know that there are two generations of the CZ Scorpion. There's an older version that looks like this, and now today we have the current version of the CZ Scorpion Evo 3. This version is vastly improved upon and is very futuristic. We now have an all polymer construction cutting down on the weight but still staying very robust. Now we're going to break this video down into the pros and cons of the Scorpion. The first pro being reliability. This is a direct blowback system, meaning it is extremely reliable. Another pro is the size. This gun has an overall length of about 26 inches, but it also allows you to fold the stock, meaning you can shove this in a backpack, a duffel bag, and it is very compact and discreet. I also know that with leaving the stock collapsed, it works well with body armor. I'll throw in a little video here of me shooting with body armor. A lot of guns, uh, wearing body armor really pushes the gun out there, makes it kind of awkward to shoot. But this gun being so small, it almost works perfectly. About one of the best guns that I have used to shoot with body armor. Another huge pro is the price. These guns are not expensive, really, at all. You can buy the base pistol, which is what this started out as, for about $750. The stock cost me a little under $200. So for about $1,000, you can have a short barreled rifle. That's not including the stamp. All said and done here, I'm just a hair over $1,200 with all the parts that I've put into this gun. Those parts being... Um, a Yeti Works grip, I did a safety delete on the right side, and I put a Magpul vertical foregrip. I also put an HB Industries extended charging handle. Now, the reason I did those, I will get into in the cons uh, of this video. This gun is also very easy to shoot. <clears throat> it doesn't have a whole lot of recoil. Um, and I also gave this gun to a new shooter the other day who hadn't shot but a few times in his life. And he was able to pick this gun up, hit everything he was aiming at with ease. Um, he was quick with it, accurate, all those good things. So, this gun has a lot of pros, and I know I'm forgetting some of them. But it also does have some cons. Uh, when I was writing down the cons, I felt like it had more cons than pros. But the cons are just kind of personal opinions that can be changed. Luckily, with that aftermarket support. The first con is recoil. I do feel like being blowback, it has quite a stout recoil. You get a lot more bounce than you do with, uh, than say, like a roller delayed blowback gun. Also, in my opinion, this gun needs to be upgraded with. A few key parts which those I have upgraded as I just told you uh, was my Yeti work works grip the factory CZ grip angle is atrocious I don't know why they send them out with that grip but I would recommend being a grip being one of the first things you buy the very first thing I would buy though would be a trigger spring kit I bought mine from HB Industries the factory trigger is obnoxious, like it's ridiculous how heavy it is, how gritty it feels. <clears throat> it is, I would say, the worst trigger that I've ever used in a factory gun. But that trigger spring kit for only about 10 bucks made it 
night and day better. I have no complaints. If somebody like Geisley made a aftermarket trigger, I would definitely throw it in here, but this $10 spring kit works just fine. Another thing, and I'm sure you heard, is the right side of the safety digs into your finger when you have it on fire. That's easily fixed with a safety delete. I kind of wanted to leave the right side safety in case I ever had to shoot left-handed. So you gotta, you gotta outweigh that there. Let's see, another thing is the charging handle. The factory one is a little short. I was having a hard time staying on it when I was charging the weapon. Again, a cheap HB Industries charging handle. Extended, I went ahead and stuck with the polymer. You can get aluminum ones, but I preferred the polymer, just personal preference. And I love this charging handle. Perfect, I would definitely recommend it too. What else do we have here? When I first picked this gun up, after I had the stock on it and everything, I thought it weighed a little much, but I actually got to reading, and it weighs about the same as its other competitors, like an MP5 or an MPX. I have shot an MP5, <clears throat> and I made, it was a K version, so I'm sure it was a little bit lighter, and I've held a lot of MPXs. Just something about this gun felt heavy. I would say that is attributed to the heavy bolt that is in this gun. You take the bolt out and the gun's nothing but plastic pretty much except for the barrel. Another con is the factory sights that this gun comes with. They leave a little bit to be desired in my opinion, but again that can easily be changed. I plan on putting a Trigicon MRO onto this. <clears throat> the rear sight does have four apertures. I leave mine on the biggest and just roll with that, uh, up close, long range, whatever. Now I want to talk about the magazines that I'm using. This is very important. I debated on running factory 30 round CZ Scorpion magazines. Well, I went with the Manicore Arms Prepper Gun Shop 32 round steel feed lip magazine. I know Military Arms Channel did a video on these with success. With the magazines that I have used, they jam every time. I think I've had one time where I've gotten through a complete magazine without a jam. I did contact Prepper Gun Shop. They offered to send me new magazines. Well, I bought 10 magazines, and I've opened two of them. Now, in my opinion, I just have a bad batch of magazines. I wish they would send me, let me send in my old magazines, send me new ones, but I understand where they're coming from, but they do want me to open up all 10, test them out. Well, that's money and ammo for me and time, and I just want some good magazines. But that's a whole, that's beside the point. That's a whole different topic. So yes, I am using the Manicore Arms Steel Feed Lip Magazines for now, but I probably will be switching over to the Factory CZ Mags. I think that pretty much does it for the cons. Like I said, they're mostly just personal preference. They can be replaced with a little bit of money. To me, the pros definitely outweigh the cons on this gun. I think we'll go ahead and end the video on that. If you have any questions about this gun, definitely leave them in the comments down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said, I definitely recommend this gun. If you're in the market for one, go ahead and pick one up. Um, it's well worth the money. Definitely check me out on Instagram. That's where I post most of my content is over there. Uh, it's also at 2 Tactical Guys. I post a whole bunch of videos and stuff on there. So be sure to give me a follow over there. Also be sure to subscribe on YouTube. I don't post a whole lot of YouTube videos, but I'm hoping to change that. Also give me a like on here. But I hope you guys learned something. I hope I answered some of the questions you might have. Definitely pick up a CZ Scorpion. You'll be happy with it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.